Welcome to the Great American Collectibles Show, heard Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on PSA.com and the PSA Facebook page. The Great American Collectibles Show is brought to you by PSA and the National Sports Collectors Convention. Tonight's headlines are brought to you by Sports Collectors Daily. For all of your hobby news, features, and more, visit sportscollectorsdaily.com. And now, your hosts, Tom Zappala and John Mallory. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? How you doing? What's Everything, happening? Everything good? Everybody good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not bad. Weather's great. Unbelievable weather. 65, 70 in Massachusetts at this time of year. this weekend. It's yeah. been awesome. It's been awesome, and it's going to be like this for the next nine or ten days. Good. Then so. a blizzard till May. Well, don't say that, man. I got to get out of Dodge before the <laughs> oh, snow yeah, falls. Oh, yeah, that's right. You start thinking about gotta that. Got to get out of Dodge before <laughs> the snow falls. Are you kidding me? All right, welcome to the Great American Collectible Show. Tom Zappler with my good friend and co host, John Mallory, JM. Rico is. <laughs> What's he doing? Signing, golfing, teaching. You know what he was doing last night? Teaching everyone the right way to he, live. He called me up, right? He said, What are you doing? <laughs> I says, I'm nothing. I'm just sitting home. This was at 4.30 before he went to bed. He was at the driving range. I told you, golfing. He, he was yeah. smoking a cigar and hitting balls at the driving That's range. Great, That's man. what he's doing. I, I want to be him when I'm 80. Listen, we have, uh, we have a great show today. Uh, it's, it's kind of a little, we're going to kind of interrupt a little bit. We've got a good friend. <laughs> you always because, interrupt. Well, John Tobey's supposed <laughs> to be at the top of the hour. And obviously, uh, he's having some Maybe a really, technical problems. Maybe a really good bat came in. and I spoke to him like 20 minutes ago. I'm all set, and of course, he's not here. So, But our main guest is here. Uh, we're going to bring him in right now, our good friend. Uh, uh, he's got a, a great auction that is coming up. Our good friend, Brian Drent from a Mile High Card Company. We're going to be seeing him this weekend. Brian, how are you, brother? I'm good. How are you, Tom? Good. Nice to see you, man. You know, you, uh, we love having you on the show because you, you, you do bring, bring so much. He's the best. He is. He's he really best. is. You know, there's a couple of them that are right up there. But listen, first, our headline. Brought to us each week <laughs> by our good friends at Sports Collectors Daily yes. and Rich Miller. This week's headline, the Yankees get <laughs> eliminated. For more information, you can go to sportscollectorsdaily.com. That's sportscollectorsdaily. Swept also. Swept. And people say, you know, because we're Red Sox fans. People say, oh, well, you can't insult the Yankees because they got – I'm doing my New York act. You can't insult the Yankees because you didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah, we can. We can do it. <laughs> Absolutely we can. we can. Sure we can. Right? We need to find joy in anything we can. Anyway, <laughs> Brian, uh, you're going to be coming down uh, this coming weekend, and we're looking forward yeah. to it. And by the way, you know, I, I think I, I, I mentioned this to you. Uh, all of our great sponsors uh, that are going to be there, there's, uh, who's going to be there? Brian? Derek? Yep. Is Do John going to be there? Well, I should say Mile High. Yep. Uh, Memory Lane. Yep. Heritage. Heritage. Leland's. Yep. Just Collect. Clean sweep. Pristine? No. No. They're all going to be there. So Ellen and I, this was Ellen's idea, Brian. She said, you know, as a little token of our gratitude, these guys, he lives in Colorado. Uh, uh, Leland's is in some, some uh, godforsaken place in New Jersey <laughs> or Pennsylvania. They don't know what a good Italian sandwich is. They don't know. So Ellen and I are bringing all of these guys and you can appreciate this. I can. Sicilians from Borelli's oh, Deli. Oh, my God. Sicilians from Borelli's Deli. You're going to love it, Brian. That's what we're bringing uh. you guys. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Big uh, did, did, we lose, uh, did we lose his no, voice? No. Brian, can you talk? I can. Oh. Yeah, he's breaking up a little bit. But that's okay. You're going to <laughs> enjoy, uh, you're gonna enjoy the sandwich. Brian, before we start, uh, I wanted to mention, uh, I know that uh, you guys lost uh, a very dear friend of yours who's been with the company for a long time. Can you tell us about Ben, Ben Gasway? Yeah, Ben Gasway, our auction coordinator for, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for almost the last 16 years, uh, 
you know, uh, mid September, uh, I he, we were working on a project, uh, and we'll we'll discuss that project coming up. Uh, but uh, we were headed back to do some photographs and scanning, and uh, you know, he didn't uh, show up. Uh, he he unfortunately uh, passed away uh, unexpectedly. He had a heart attack at fifty three. So uh, wow. he was uh, absolute blessing. Uh, to work with great guy um, you know a lot of people a lot of our customers heck he was a bigger point of contact for many of our customers than uh, than I am really? uh, act uh, it's exactly the way you want it to be um, he had become so entrenched in, in mile high card company and with our customers that uh, people I think preferred to, to deal with him uh, rather than myself and uh, he was incredibly well versed within the business, and, and he's greatly, greatly missed. Yeah, I mean, you know, what you do, Brian, a lot of people see you as kind of the front man. A lot of people see what's on your website and the thing, but there's a lot of pieces and a lot of people that go into doing the business that you do. And um, I never had the pleasure of meeting Ben, but I'm sure it's a loss for you guys. So we, we send our condolences. Absolutely. Well, Really appreciate it, guys. Brian, before we get into the uh, next auction, which is a blockbuster auction based on some of the stuff that I'm reading, uh, you've had a pretty successful summer. You, are you happy with the way things have progressed for Mile High uh, this past summer? Yeah, of course. Uh, the business is incredibly strong still. Uh, there's some adjustments that are being taking place. Uh, in the market, but uh, we've had two really successful auctions. Our uh, fall auction will be our third auction. Usually we get four in. Uh, the year was interrupted by, uh, you know, uh, Ben's tragic passing and then uh, a couple other things. So we'll get back on track next year with four auctions. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, we've had a tremendous year. Uh, had some great material come through. Uh, been able to deal with... Uh, Many collectors uh, in a consignment basis as well as retail basis. So very successful year. You know, you mentioned uh, some adjustments uh, in the hobby uh, over the last couple of months. Can you can you can you touch upon those? What type of adjustments are you talking about? Just the the type of products that have that have emerged, or, or you know, what, what do we uh, what do we mean? You know. I I think I was more touching on just the market in general. You're seeing a little bit of a shift in regards to the modern, ultra modern, uh, seemingly uh, coming back to the pack a little bit in regards to prices. Uh, base products not nearly as uh, as uh, popular and, and uh, high of price as they were within the past year, two years for sure. You know, Brian, that's uh, kind of, uh, you know, again, you know, we've talked about this uh, uh, ad nauseum and, and I, I'm a big proponent of, I'm a vintage guy. I know you're a vintage guy and it was just a matter of time be, be, before this whole modern, ultra modern thing kind of corrected itself, correct? I always kind of translate it and look at it from the point of, you know, the modern and ultra modern maybe being like tech stocks and the right. vintage be- blue chips um what we're seeing on the vintage side is extraordinarily uh top end high end items are performing to levels that really have never been seen before and i think that will continue and even grow and appreciate whereas mid to lower level especially in in regards to condition the prices were getting extraordinarily high for you know cobs and ruths and Gehrig's and then obviously into the 50s with mantles and mazes and whereas the prices maybe are staying up with mantle and Ruth uh, you're seeing a little bit of a shift downwards and, and I'm talking cards uh, you know grades five and below where we were seeing prices getting to levels that were really not uh, ever approached and, and we're seeing a little bit uh, of uh uh, pushback on those prices. Hey, Brian, you had some great items uh, in your last auction, and one of sure. them, I knew you had some Michael Jordan stuff, and as we're kind of talking about 
you know, vintage versus modern. Jordan's somewhere in the middle there, I guess, you know, in terms of the, the time frame of his career. But he seems to be a guy that, you know, since the whole last dance, since the, he was sort of the poster child for the, for the boom in the business during the pandemic because the last dance came out, Jordan stuff went through the roof. But he's had some staying power now. And is it, is it too much to say that Michael Jordan now can be up there in that pantheon with the Ruths and the Gehrigs and the Mantles in terms of the hobby? Absolutely not. No, I think you've got to look at uh, uh, our business is becoming less defined by sport, but more defined by icon. Yeah. And yeah, uh, obviously, Ruth is there. Garrick, you know, Mano, Cobb, and obviously they're baseball guys. But in modern times, so to speak, Jordan would be the equivalent of Ruth for that period of time or mantle during the fifties and sixties. And so Jordan is the guy that everybody points to. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely believe he deserves and is viewed in the same pantheon, as you said, in regards to those other uh, icons. Is there anyone else? The name that comes to mind is Brady. I mean, is there anyone else that, that we can say is there or approaching that? I would say Brady. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan and after that, uh, you know, there's probably some people that would think guys like Mike Trout, but he, he just hasn't <clears> been there <throat> enough. And seemingly within the last couple of years, he's had a lot of injury yeah, issues. Right. We are chatting with Brian Drent from a mile high card company. Um, Brian, the, the, the Wagners, the Cobbs, the, the, uh, the roots, um, they are, Overall, holding their own, and, I, and I, for selfish reasons, I, I just uh, purchased. I, I want to get your opinion, is because I've already bought the cards. <laughs> uh, uh, the M one sixteen Wagner and the E ninety dash two Wagner. Was it a good purchase on my part? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think uh, M one sixteen uh, pretty much a little bit undervalued. The blue, the, the blue background, the blue yeah, background, the blue. Yeah, I think um, that's a card that definitely you don't see often enough. Very attractive. And, and when in, you look at it in regards to tobacco, uh, underpriced. So I, I think that was a great pickup. And then uh, with the E90-2, uh, iconic card, great image, and a uh, card you don't see very often. So... Uh, two two fabulous pickups. The key the key is when you're married. <coughs> Here's the key: you make the purchase first, yeah, and then you tell the wife. Oh yeah, you have to. Yeah. Just it's gold. Yeah, it's you gold. Have to. <laughs> that's exactly what. I, that's exactly what I did. And her answer was, "You what? <laughs> it's worked out pretty well, though." <laughs> All right, Brian. Let's talk about now. Uh, you've got uh, you've got an auction coming up. Consignments starting to come in. And then, by the way, I know that you usually pick up a lot of consignments at the Shriners in Boston, correct? Yeah, we really do. So interestingly, our consignment deadline was last Monday. Oh, for current auction so we'll have a lot of the auction uh highlights on display at the show we'll obviously be taking consignments buying outright making appraisals things of that nature uh for auctions uh that because the next one will be in february so it's just around the corner believe it or not but uh uh that's kind of how it, it's going to work in this situation you're right oftentimes uh we definitely are taking final consignments at this show but just the way our year shook out, uh, uh, this is the way it's going to be this time. Brian, some of the cards we mentioned, we're going to all call them the icon cards. Uh, those are yes. always going to be great. But I've seen just doing this show, following the business the last few years, you know, there's been some collecting trends. You know, and, and you can call that whatever you want, whether it's complete sets or photographs or tickets or you know, game used jerseys. What have you seen as someone who's been in the business a long time now as sort of the trends? Not only maybe the last year or two, but then maybe looking ahead to, to 2023. Yeah, for sure. I think you touched on a couple of them. Notably, tickets have become incredibly popular. We have some nice tickets in this upcoming auction. We have a uh, Wayne Gretzky debut ticket. We had one uh, previously, uh, I believe it was in our March auction, and uh, we set the record, a PSA 3MK, a little uh, – 
four two pencil notation on the back got it the mk but we did that that ticket went for a hundred and one thousand wow. we have a wow. three in this auction graded as straight three so that'll be exciting we also have a a, a tom brady debut ticket uh so that'll be fun to see uh so those that's an area that we're definitely seeing really a, a great deal of interest in and then um one thing that I, I think is going to show future appreciation, obviously type one photographs have become incredibly popular. Some of them garnering huge prices, especially iconic images and images that are related to baseball cards. Um, so some of those pro- items have gotten away from the average collector uh, in regards to price. They've just become so valuable. But I think there's room for people to collect that type of material. But instead of doing it in type ones, do it twos, threes, and fours. And I think you'll see future appreciation with type two, type three, and type four photographs, as well as obviously the, the, the type ones that are already at pretty high levels. Interesting. I never thought of that. Interesting yeah. concept. Yeah. Brian, what about uh, on the card side of it? Uh, anything that really sticks out that you can chat about? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we get so immersed in this uh, uh you forget what's actually i mean are there, are there any of those gems that are really gonna boom hit you between the eyes like wow i gotta put a bid in on that one yeah there's some stuff coming up in our auction that i think is, is extraordinary we have a t206 complete set that we're offering <laughs> as a complete set and this one's actually been graded by sgc yeah. every cards in an SGC holder. It's a 5.2, which is wow. absolutely astounding when you consider every single card's there other than the big four. Yeah. Uh, get that in a complete set, 5.2. I think that's going to do extraordinarily well. And uh, there's a real uh, favorable uh, centering on many of the cards. They were hand-selected, so they're – that's a beautiful, beautiful set. And then we just picked up a 52 tops maze in a PSA eight. Wow. Uh, it just got graded. And I will tell you, I've offered that card recently and thought that those were the nicest examples that I had seen in a near mint to mint card. But this one is absolutely perfectly centered, incredibly bright, perfect registration. Just the colors are astounding. And it really resembles a much higher graded card. It's absolutely technically graded correct. But when you first encounter the card, it absolutely looks like it's almost a mint card. So I think that'll perform extraordinarily well, along with a lot one in the auction is the 33 Gaudi Ruth, uh, number 144 in a PSA 8. But it has the A gold sticker. So it's the wow. elevated level of an 8. And it, it's really just an absolutely top-notch example. Brian, uh, getting back to the 52 mantle. Sure. You know, we were talking to Joe Orlando last week, and I asked him, I'm going to ask you the same question. Why is that card so popular? Brass tacks. I mean, there's a zillion of them out there. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, it's what is the reason? I think, number one, it's Mickey Mantle. Number two, it comes from the famed high number series. Number three, the nostalgia and just the, the, the feeling about it, all the stories, how the high numbers were taken out on a barge into uh, the Atlantic Ocean, dropped off. You know, they couldn't sell the product. Uh, Mano was maybe one of those first guys that, you know, had so much hype and hoopla about his coming to the Yankees um, that that nobody really had seen that before. He's a blonde-haired, good-looking kid from Oklahoma, kind of a hayseed, comes and, and to the, New York. There's a, there's a mythical quality about him, too, isn't there, because of there, the sad way his career ended with the injuries and things like no, that. There's almost a what might have been quality to Mickey Mantle. Like, it, I mean, he had a great career, but it still it could have been even more when you think it about it. Been. And yeah. then... When you look at the card, just the card in general, it just has like a 
spotlight on it. It just looks different. There isn't another card in that 52 set that looks like that card that just has that all the colors seem to to be perfectly aligned. You know, the blues and the and the background and the bat and the, the flesh tones. It's just a, a captivating card and it's become uh, American pop culture. It's a, it's a great card. It really was. I yeah. don't know. I don't. You don't own one, do you? I do not. I, I don't either. I don't have one. <laughs> I, I should. I would. It's one, one card that I left out of my collection. Uh, before we take a break, Brian, what about the maze? Are the maze? Listen, let's be. You know, uh, Willie's up there. Um, we, yeah. We're not. We're not sure how much longer he's going to be with us. Is that card a card to keep an eye on? The fifty-one, the fifty-two. Absolutely. I mean, if you think of it in the context that you kind of just touched on very briefly, it, it, it really uh, – look at Mantle's 51 Bowman. Look at Mantle's 52 Tops. Those are absolutely iconic cards, and that's not to say the Maze 51 Bowman and 52 Tops aren't. But price-wise, they definitely pale in comparison right. to the man. But you look at the careers of the two players – Mays was actually statistically the better ball player. Right. With his, you know, getting towards the end, and, and, and like you had touched on, we don't know how much longer we're going to have him. I think it opens up the door that there could be much greater appreciation percentage wise actually on the maze cards than on the mantle cards going forward. Interesting. Yep. All right, we're chatting with Brian Drent from Mile High Card Company. We're going to take a quick break. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Since 1996, Brian Drent and the staff at Denver's Mile High Card Company have led the charge in the collectibles hobby. Mile High is a full-service dealer specializing in buying and selling cards and offers a competitive consignment program for all collectors. Whether it be their computerized want list service, appraisals, or auction services, Mile High has it all. If you've been searching for a company with a selection of high-grade vintage 1888 to 1970 baseball cards and memorabilia that shares your passion, aim high, Mile High. Go to milehighcardco.com or call 303-840-2784 for more information. For more than 30 years, Robert Edward Auctions has been the industry leader when it comes to helping you realize the most money for your baseball cards and sports memorabilia. In addition to their unparalleled reputation for honesty and integrity, they reach the largest number of bidders in the business and offer lower seller's fees, as well as generous cash advances up front on your valuable material. Contact them today at 908-226-9900. That's 908-226-9900 or at robertedwardauction.com. This is Brian Drent, president of Mile High Card Company. Is your sports card and memorabilia collection properly insured? For easily replaced personal property, homeowner's insurance is all most people need. But for prized possessions that you may have spent a lifetime collecting, it doesn't go nearly far enough. Collectibles Insurance Services has been insuring for over 50 years. They offer a full range of protection and a $0 deductible at an affordable rate with no appraisals required. I know because they insure my collection. If you have a minute, go to collectinsure.com and learn more about insuring your personal card or memorabilia collection. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, We will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 
606-LANE, or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. How would you like to own the bat that was used by your favorite player when he hit that towering home run or game-winning base hit? Now look no further than JT Sports, specializing in the sale and authentication of professional game-used bats. As the official authenticators of professional model game-used bats for PSA DNA, JT Sports will guarantee the authenticity of any bat purchased from them. JT Sports also buys and sells game-worn uniforms, gloves, and baseball equipment. The unique quality of the collectible is what JT Sports is all about. Give them a call at 609-487-8003 or check them out at GameUseBats.com. We are back and chatting with Brian Drent from Mile High Card Company. John Tarby, we just spoke to John, uh, and he is not going to be joining us. Uh, he's blaming Comcast. Uh, he said there's construction going around his building, and he's really not happy with Comcast because he's also lost his internet. So as a result, uh, John is not going to be with us. I'm, I'm a little saddened by that because remember when he kissed me? At the National? He did. Yeah. yeah it's been a little slow. That's been actually the highlight of my social life the last few months. So, was... so Toby's a piece of work. Looking isn't forward he, to Brian? seeing him again. Brian, you know? You, know, you know John pretty well, right? Absolutely. He's been here in our office and authenticated some uh, great bats uh, that we've offered. So I've known John for a long time. He's, he's, he's a, a guy. Good, good guy. Just a nice, nice great guy. guy. Awesome. Really. And by, yeah, he's he doing... taught me the right way to pronounce his name, John Tulabi. <laughs> he's doing a, a gig out in Chicago uh, at the Chicago Times thing. He's always busy, man. Yeah, he's he always is. somewhere. He is. You know? All right, let's get back to Brian. Brian, you know... Uh, uh, look, can you mention, before we get into like some other topics, uh, anything sure. else that you really want to highlight for the upcoming auction? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've got uh, uh, a tremendous uh, amount of high-grade, like, 50s cards. Uh, we're breaking a couple sets, and uh, we've kind of been the originator and, and in my opinion, the, the best at doing this, and that's a, a, a program that we developed many years ago. Uh, where we sell the set as a complete set, and then we break the set as singles, and it really sells to the highest aggregate bidder. Uh, we have a software package that tracks both sides of it so our customers know exactly uh, which way that uh, that's leaning. Great concept. And that's neat. Yeah, it, that's very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, and I think it really provides the very best uh, for our for our for our consigner, which is the person we're working the hardest for. And uh, so we definitely get some really nice sets. But in this one, we have a 53 Bowman color set that's all eights. That'll be fun to break up. But the one that's really a marquee and I'm really excited about is a 54 top set. It's number three on the PSA set registry. I think it's nine point. Uh, oh, wow. There's 199 nines, 110, and only 50 cards that aren't nines in the set. So wow. it's going to be extraordinary. I can't remember a set like this from the 50s of this kind of ilk and this nature of, of high grade being offered in quite some time. So it should be a lot of fun to see what, what happens there. Hey, Brian, picking up on the first part um, of your answer there, um, what what's your client base like? I mean, a lot of times in this game, you have a family or a person that comes across a find, you know, and then it's not a lot of, re you're not going to ever hear from those people again. Is sure. there a lot of return clients, return customers uh, in this game, or is it kind of new people here and there when it comes to auction to auction? That Great question, John. I, um, I think personally, uh, Mile High Card Company a, as an entity, we have to work just as hard, if not much harder than our competition. Listen, we're not the biggest, uh, we're not the most, uh, uh, you know, largest auction house out there. Right. I think we 
carved out a great place within the auction uh, platform. And that's because we work really hard for our consigners. We have great material and we have really nice high-end auctions. Uh, but we have to go the extra mile. And a lot of that is relationship-based. Um, customers that I've known for a long, long time, they've really started out as customers and become friends. And, uh, you know, they start out as acquaintances, become friends. And so that helps tremendously. But with the uh, explosion in the market in the last two to three years, there's definitely a lot of big money guys that are new to the business. And so we've had to, uh, to reach out to those people, make them aware of ourselves uh, a- as best as we can and, and uh, meet those people and, and then uh, you know work with them as well. So it, it's kind of a marriage of the two two different sides of this. Brian, with with this new group of investors that you're talking about, uh, sure. some of these guys that uh, are high rollers, um, and they, I'm assuming that a lot of them are young. Do you kind of mentor them or, and uh, advise them uh, when when they uh, contact you? In other words, you know, hey, look, at I've been in, I, you know, I've been investing in, in in the modern card market for the last couple of years. I've spent a lot of money. Now I want to kind of gravitate towards some of the older stuff. Do you advise them uh, if they ask, or do they ask? Yeah, that's a great question as well. I think it, it's kind of a feeling out process. Some of these, and I think you touched on it, a good bit of them are younger guys. Um, and with that said, sometimes they'll lead you where they, they want to go. They'll ask for advice. And when they do so, that's a great place to interject just what we've seen, what I've encountered through my time in this business. Other times, you know, they may feel strong enough in their own opinion, their own thoughts as to, you know, handle things on their own. But they're always open to a little bit of suggestion. So it's kind of just a, uh, you know, kind of feel out the situation, uh, understand where they're coming from, understand their background, their experiences, and then marry that with my experiences, my background, and my knowledge in the business. And and sometimes it really works as a good uh, mutual, uh, you know, agreement. Brian, we're celebrating the uh, 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier, Major League Baseball. I know you had some Jackie Robinson items in your last auction. Any Robinson items in the coming auction? And can you just talk about Jackie in general uh, in the game right now? Yeah, for sure. Um, We have a really, really, really interesting Jackie Robinson item. It's a card that is an oversized card. It's black and white. It's a 1947 Pleatwood Slacks, which was a clothing manufacturer yep. uh, card of Jackie Robinson's. He's in a suit and tie, and it really predates. It, it's issued during his rookie year. Um, it's a card that there's only three examples graded by PSA. This one's being a PSA one. It's more attractive than your normal one. It's got some creasing, some definite wear, but it's going to be exciting because it's a card that predates his 1948 leaf issue. Obviously the 49 Bowman, uh, and even some of the lesser known cards, you know, 40, the blue tints, uh, some of the, uh, Uh, cards of that nature so it really is amongst if not at the very first card issued of them and it'll be fun to see what that sells for so brian what about the 47 jackie exhibit card is that a good card to have uh, in the collection you know it's an interesting card because it's issued from 47 all the way through 66 um So where was it actually issued? Was it 1947? Was it, uh, you know, in the 50s? Um, I think it was probably late 40s. It's definitely a card that you can find. You can find it in higher grade. It's a good image of Jackie kind of in a, 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 you know, uh, coming around a base, you know. So definitely a card uh, that, uh, whereas in the past, you know, 15 years ago, it didn't carry very much weight, and wasn't really looked upon as a very favorable card. A lot of Jackie's earlier cards like that have become more 
uh, well thought of over over you know the last 10, 15 years for sure. Well, my beautiful wife <laughs> bought one for me. Oh yeah, for my birthday, she picked one up, and it was a forty seven exhibit card. Nice signed yeah. signed by Jackie Robinson. Oh man, that that's fabulous. Yeah, that's awesome. That was a, that's should, awesome. that was a nice gift. Hey, that's you a good should. that's a good uh, jumping point. I was actually going to ask the next question, and we've had some guests on the show recently. Um, it used to be with cards, if it was signed, it was a bad thing. But I'm mm-hmm. sensing now that signed cards it's a great question. might be growing in, in popularity. Where are you on that, Yeah, that's Brian? a good question. Yeah, I was always under exactly what you said, John, where for years and years and years we were taught, oh, no, don't get the card signed. That's yeah. frowned upon can't have that especially early cards like rookie cards things of that nature but now uh that's become very very highly in vogue very popular and we're seeing outstanding prices for signed items obviously you know we were fortunate enough a couple years ago to have some beautiful 33 gaudy ruth signed Garrig signed things of that nature. Uh, I think last year we had an absolutely mind-boggling 49 Bowman signed by Jackie. And so cards like that have become increasingly popular and really are showing tremendous appreciation. We are chatting with Brian Drent from Mile High Card Company. Brian, the whole phenomena of unopened packs, yeah. is it still... <laughs> I have a hard time wrapping my arms around it because I'm not into that, but it's still a huge, huge, huge part of the market. Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, we've uh, been very fortunate, you know, with our Beer Box 1, Beer Box 2 right. find uh, from, from previous years, some of the unopened that we've encountered. We've got a good amount of unopened in this auction. And there's one item in particular that I think is just absolutely extraordinary. Non-sports has become such uh, a big part of the market, and uh, it's something that every auction house, ourselves included, uh, now have sections within the catalog of non-sports, whether it be vintage and or modern. And one of those uh key non-sport issues is wacky packages and the first ones were (laughs) i remember those yeah yeah ones were 1967 they were the die cut ones they're very valuable as singles and you never see an unopened pack i mean literally never they're just not out there in the marketplace but uh, not only do we have an unopened pack in this auction, but we have an unopened box of 24 packs. Uh, I've only seen one other. Uh, it was probably about five or six years ago. I don't know of any other boxes. This one's been wrapped by BBCE, so it should be really exciting, really fun to see what that's going to sell for. Another um, player, Zap, that I've seen in recent auctions, recent interviews we've done, and a guy that kind of is under the radar, uh, I think in terms of the hobby a little bit, is Ernie Banks. But I've been seeing more and more Ernie Banks. I think you had Ernie, an Ernie Banks item in your last auction as well. Um, what do you What do you well, think well, of it? To, Both to, you guys. To add to that, you know, it's not just the Ernie Banks. You know, I've seen a little uptick. And Brian, you correct me if I'm wrong too. Ernie, maybe like Al K line. Yep. You know, uh, uh, are those cards. Is that era? Is it? Again, we talked about this last week. Those players, those second tier. Uh, mm. Hall of Famers, I call them. Are those cards picking up ahead of steam at all? Yeah, for sure, especially early cards, most notably the rookies. Uh, I mean, obviously, we've touched on Mano, we've touched on Mays, we've touched on, you know, we can go to Ted Williams, Koufax, Clemente, etc. And their cards have become so valuable. It's outpriced a lot of people right. in the market. Place. So, what's the next level in that natural, uh, you know, selection? And that would be Banks. It would be K Line. You know, things of that nature. Eddie Matthews, maybe Duke Snyder. And so, we're seeing a nice appreciation for that type of material. And I think of those, just like you touched on, Banks and maybe K Line are the two that are the easily most easily uh, identifiable as showing. 
investigation. You know who I put in that category? Yes. I mean, yeah, I know. There's yes, another guy. Card is just that's another guy. Yeah. I right? mean, yes, his I rookie card's a nice car, but the rest of Yaz's cards you can yeah, pick up for a song and a, a dance. A lot of those guys, those kind of '60s into the '70s guys, it just yeah, they don't seem to be up there where they should be. You know? Brian, is there? I, I, I've never asked this question to any yeah. uh, of the auction house owners, but. Is there ever a disappointing hmm. final result on a particular item that you, 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 how do you, how do you, what do you say to the consigner? You know, like initially you're saying, ah, oh, this card's going to be a home run and it, it only becomes a single. What do you do and how do you approach that with the consigner? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Yeah. Believe me, we all, all of us. And uh, I chuckle a little bit just because I've been doing this so long and understand the routine so so well. We absolutely have consigners that are slightly disappointed from time to time, you know, with the performance of certain cards. And that said, um, the one thing that uh, kind of sticks in my craw, if you will, is when I think a card's going to do extraordinarily well. And it just falls flat for whatever reason on that given day. You know, we just don't get the result we're looking for or that we kind of had uh, forecasted, prognosticated, whatever you may, you know, you know word selection you want to select. Um, there was a recent card, uh, you know, and the consigner was absolutely a joy to deal with. Uh, that's not always the case, but right. in this case, <laughs> always the case, but it was. Uh, and, and it was a card that I would have thought there was no chance that it wasn't going to perform up to the level that I thought. And it just didn't for whatever reason. And uh, it happens. It happens. We, you know, I think one thing that, um, you know, I'd like to you know remind consigners, customers, people that are in the business, every one of the auctioneers that you have on your show, myself included, we do everything we can to, you know, strengthen the possibility, the opportunity that a card, a piece of memorabilia, a game used bat, a jersey performs to the very best level that it can within any one of our auctions. And it is sometimes if you just don't have that, nut, you know, second, third, fourth bidder involved, it doesn't happen. And uh, it, it's, you know. I'm not going to say it's crushing, but it's something that is part of the business. On the flip side, there's always items that quite literally I don't think are going to perform to the level that they they do perform to. So it's kind of, uh, you know, one or the other. Brian, you have a personal collection? Yeah, I don't collect cards per se just because I can't afford the ones I'd want to keep. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, what is it? I mean, what do you what do you what do you specialize in? For yeah, yourself? I have some nice game used jerseys. Oh, you okay. do. Uh, you know, I have some game used jerseys, some game used bats, uh, display pieces, uh, advertising items, things of that nature. What's so, the uh, What's the attraction of that for you, Brian? Well, I in in terms of the game used jerseys, I mean, that's the the jersey they were. You know, those iconic athletes were yeah. wearing. Time they played so i have a gretzky game used jersey that's fabulous to, to me just to think you know i have a john elway jersey from his second season i'm a huge denver bronco fan it's not been easy this year <laughs> uh, hopefully it gets a little bit better but just to to think that elway wore that you know there's team repairs on it it's been through the the, the war so to speak that, that's what's the attraction to me. Very, very interesting. Uh, we got a couple more minutes. We're going to extend a few more minutes, guys. That's okay with you. Um, we are chatting with Brian Drent from uh, Mile High Card Company. Uh, Brian, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned memorabilia. I've, I've done the same thing. I've, 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 I find it interesting. I mean, I've, you know, I've been a card collector for 30 years, 35 years, and I'm, I'm kind of switching gears now, and I'm finding it a lot of fun. Uh, just nothing in particular, no rhyme or reason, but if it's, if it's a piece of memorabilia that really piques my interest, I, you know, I, I make an offer or I, or I buy it, and it's, it's, I'm really enjoying it. It's, I'm really you enjoying it. You know what's great about 
is I, I have the stuff, some of it displayed in my basement and I have a bar down there and, uh, you know, so I'll have a couple of buddies or, or we'll have people over and we end up in the basement having a couple pops maybe. And there's no, maybe there's no, maybe there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's here to look over and see a Gretzky jersey or right. a Elway jersey yeah, yeah. or a, a Ted Williams game used bat or a signed Ruth ball or I have a tour of Japan ball and see those. And your friends that maybe aren't collectors are far more interested in that than they would be in a 59 Mickey Mantle card. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Brian, do you keep, you know, I. I have, <laughs> Ellen and I, this is another thing we go back and forth on. So do you display most of your memorabilia rather than keep it in a vault or a safe? Yeah, I do. I I, I, I enjoy it. So why wouldn't I have right. it out? Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I bought it because I liked it. I, I have it displayed in, uh, you know, a nice way so it you know my wife lets me you know it's cool (laughs) (laughs) do what i want in the basement and and that's my place and so it's um it's displayed nicely but uh it definitely um you know is far easier to display than a baseball card brian what's your outlook on 2023 before we let you go not only your business but business as a whole Oh, man, I think we're headed for a great year. Uh, the economy obviously has shifted a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're going to see where that goes. But at the top end of this, I, I think we're set up for another fabulous year. I, I love getting towards the end of a given year just because the prospect of the new year is just around the corner. And uh, I know at Mile High we're raring to go. Um, you know, we've added a couple new pieces after – the untimely passing of Ben Gassaway. So it, it's just moving forward, uh, remembering the past, but moving forward. And, and I'm ex- super excited for 2023. Well, that's a great philosophy. Absolutely. Uh, Brian, we look forward to seeing you this coming weekend. And I, you're going you're gonna to love that sandwich, man. You are going to <laughs> love that sandwich. <laughs> little, little prosciutto. Uh, salami. <laughs> I mean, this is not. This is like imported stuff. Like just really imported provolone cheese. <laughs> oh, you're gonna love it. All right, listen. We'll see you this weekend. Uh, go to MileHighCardCo.com. When does the auction start, Bry? Starts uh, November 16th. It'll end December 1st. November 16th to December 1st. We'll see you this weekend. Thanks, Brian. Right. Take Forward care. Brian Drent, he's the mile. Best. Oh, he's a great guy. Love that guy. Uh, Brian Drent, you know something? <laughs> there's there's a handful of guys. That's right. That in this industry, that, right. that are just good. People. As you say, they get it. Yep. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Pristine Auction is a family-owned and operated online auction specializing in autographed memorabilia, sports cards, coins, art, and collectibles. Since their founding in 2010, they've grown to two facilities in Phoenix, Arizona totaling over 60,000 square feet. Jared Cavalli and an incredible staff of over 150 team members serve a very large customer base and enjoy every minute of it. By working with leading authentication companies, Pristine ensures all items are 100% authentic. In addition, third-party authenticators regularly travel to Pristine Auction to provide authentication services on site. Pristine Auction strives to operate its business in a way that's honoring to God, their families, and their customers. With a strong focus on speed, quality, and premier customer service, their mission is to be the leading online auction for every level of collector and fan. Pristine also works for Hope Sports and Identity Hoops International, traveling to Mexico to build houses for the less fortunate. Pristine Auction offers several online auction formats with thousands of auctions ending each day. For more information, go to pristineauction.com. That's Pristine Auction, the best in the business. If you're a discerning collector interested in owning the most important pieces in the hobby, look no further than Leland's Auctions. The original sports auction and appraisal house, Leland's was established in 1985 by legendary pioneer founder Joshua Leland Evans. And today, President Mike Hefner carries on their tradition. From the Tom Brady card and memorabilia collection 
to the famed Boston Garden Auction to high-end card auctions from every major sport. Leland's has always maintained the highest standards. Go to Leland's.com and get your bid in. That's Leland's, the hobby's leading sports auction house for four decades. It's often been said that championships are won on the practice field and world records come only to those willing to work harder than everybody else. Heritage Auctions is the world's largest collectibles auctioneer because we believe that becoming the best is only an invitation to the challenge of remaining the best. This requires the skills of the hobby's top experts, capable of identifying and maximizing value for our consigners. It requires the most visited website in the industry, supporting a global audience of collectors over a million and a half strong. It requires a dedicated press department that expands our global reach far beyond the entrenched hobby marketplace. It's hard work, but a simple premise. Present the finest collectibles to the largest population of potential buyers, and world records will come. We invite all listeners to put the unmatched power of Heritage Auctions to work for you. Auction evaluations are always free, and our commission-based fee structure ensures that our interests are always aligned. The highest possible price for your collectibles. There will always be new world records to chase, so let's chase them together. Visit our website at ha.com and request your no-obligation review today. Hi, this is Dan from Memory Lane Auctions here to remind you that the renowned Memory Lane Collectibles Company has served as a beacon of light to the collecting community for the past several decades. Indeed, folks, it has been our utmost privilege and pleasure to provide the most enthusiastic collectors with an abundance of the finest sports cards and memorabilia for America's most coveted sports personalities via our world-class auctions. Whether you choose either a private sale transaction or the auction route, Memory Lane cordially invites you to reach out to us to maximize the value of your prized possessions. Also, it is not just sales that we pride ourselves on being the best of the rest, because if you are seeking a particular keepsake for your esteemed gathering, we will be relentless in our quest to find that special piece to fulfill your collecting dreams. So no time to wait. Reach out to us today for the purposes of capitalizing on our unparalleled marketing capabilities. Simply pick up the phone and dial 877-606-5263. That's 877-606-LANE or find us on the World Wide Web at www.memorylaneinc.com. Now is the time for your valued consignment to ultimately become another one of Memory Lane's record-setting prices. Hi, everyone. This is Rico Petroselli. If you want to own a piece of sports history at an affordable price, take a look at the magnificent highest resolution prints of famed artist James Ferentino. Check out the link here on the screen, and you'll be amazed at renderings of some of the greats like Clementi, Ruth, Brady, Jordan, and some of the greatest athletes to ever grace the sports landscape. The very affordable limited editions capture every shade of the original work. And yes, they're individually signed by James. Prices for these art gems range between $200 and $400 and will look spectacular in your office or collectibles room. Typically, a James original sells for five figures, but you can purchase one of his affordable reproductions now and cherish it forever. Go to jamesfiorentino.com forward slash store and purchase your personal work of art. James Ferentino, in our opinion, is the greatest sports artist on the planet. They are prized possessions, and you need a place to store them that is safe and secure. The eBay Vault is exactly that, an insured climate-controlled facility with state-of-the-art security that guards your valuable collection around the clock. Your Vault account is protected by two-step verification and easily accessible through eBay Collection. And everything stored in the eBay Vault is backed by Authenticity Guarantee. Buying and selling is a seamless experience 
When you buy an eligible card on eBay, it can be sent directly to the eBay vault at checkout. Or if it's already in the eBay vault, you can just keep it there. And selling from the eBay vault is just as easy. Every card in the vault has been expertly inspected, detailed, and photographed, so you can quickly sell it with a pre-populated listing. And if your buyer chooses to withdraw their card from the eBay vault, we handle packing, shipping, and insurance. And same goes for you. If you want that rare rookie card in your hands, you can have it shipped to you at any time. Collect like a pro with the eBay vault. And Zap, you know, the eBay vault is climate controlled, insured, and protected with 24-hour security. You knew that, right? I did. Soon you'll be able to send cards already in your collection directly to the eBay vault. They will take high-quality photos of the front and back of the card and document all the details for your viewing pleasure and to make the listing-to-sell process seamless. For more info, go to eBay, eBay eBay.com, that would be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Connecting buyers and sellers globally. You know, a couple of things, a couple of programming notes. Obviously, John Tobey was supposed to be with us this week, but he's having internet problems. Uh, just a point of reference, around the 19th, he is going to be, uh, JT Sports is going to be in Chicago. Okay. Uh, there's the Chicago Times um, show there, <clears throat> but JT Sports is going to be set up across the street at the Embassy Suites doing authentications for bats. So if you have a gamer or if you have a bat that you wanted, uh, you want to get uh, authenticated, you can certainly contact uh, John Tobby, John at uh, JT Sports, and he will uh, be He's happy to. He's got some uh, amazing stuff in his Game Use Bats website. Oh. Now. And it's not just bad. Like, he's got a bunch of Mike Trout batting gloves. I saw that. Cap, cleats, Yeah, he's getting into that items. stuff now. The Martin guy's got some Vlad Jr. there. He's got some Ronald Acuna Jr. from the Braves. He's got a lot of good stuff And there. he does. He is the official authenticator oh. of PSA. For he's unbelievable. PSA. Yeah. Um, the other one is uh, pristine auctions. Yep. You know, uh, Jared and the, and the gang of pristine, that's a really, really unique uh, uh, auction house. Yeah, they're not like your typical run of the mill. They're not like I don't say run of the mill, but they 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 are, they have so many different uh, components. They have a daily auction, then they have an elite auction, right? Then they have a trading card auction. <laughs> they have a coin, coin auction, auction. Ah, yeah. fine art. Yeah, and then they have a ten minute auction. Yeah, where you know it's just it's just crazy. And the other thing that's cool about them, like a lot of the places, they have you know something for every collector at different financial levels. So you can find something that isn't necessarily six figures. You can find something you really like for a few hundred bucks or whatever. Absolutely. You know? Yep. You know, I've got to. Uh, we have a few minutes, David. Right. You know, I've got to talk to Ellen about allowing me to display my memorabilia. Well, do you have a room in that mansion well, you have I, on the I, river? No, there? I have. I have. I have my third floor office, uh, which is display. which is being renovated. You display. But I, I want to put them downstairs in the bar, in the pub. Yeah, that's not going to happen. She won't let me. I've been in your living room. That's not going to happen. She just will not allow. Cover it. the deck with something and put them outside. I got I got to figure this out, man. <laughs> you know, I got this stuff in a freaking safe in the vault, <laughs> and it's just some cool stuff there. I'll bet. You know, I mean, bet. I have some stuff displayed. Well, it's fun to see the guys we have on. I know Brian had a few things yeah. behind Ellen, 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 we're going to have a chat when yeah. we get home. You guys need to start displaying. I think right in the living room would be great. <laughs> sure, <I love> <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, why don't you tell us about our good friend, Joe Drellick, and the Philly Show right, we'll coming up. East Coast Sports Marketing and Hunt Auctions are pleased to present the Philadelphia Sports Collector Show, the Philly Show, Friday, December 2 to Sunday, December 4, held at our new location, the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center Hall, a Hall A, 100 Station Ave, Oaks, Pennsylvania, 19456 is the zip if you need that. <laughs> Wait, wait, shop that, over did he 250, put that down? Yeah. Just, Joe Drellick wrote this. He, Joe Drellick's the best. Shop over 250, 250 of your favorite hobby dealer booths on over 75,000 square feet of sports collectibles heaven from the 1800s to present day. Major sports auction houses and third-party grading and authentication companies are on hand to assist your collecting needs. The Philly Show is family-friendly. Kids under 12 get in free. Autograph guests to include Baseball Hall of Famers Wade Boggs, Vlad Guerrero Sr., Philadelphia Eagles greats Brandon Graham, Keith Byers, Seth Joyner, and many more. For more information, go to phillyshow.com. Remember, since 1975, the Philly Show is where it all started. You know, we've been blessed uh, on the Great American Collectibles Show because the National Sports Collectors Convention has always, right from day one, been a large sponsor Mm -hmm. of this show. And, uh, you know... uh, John Brogy has been uh, like a mentor to us. He's, oh, yeah. he's been 
just a phenomenal, phenomenal no doubt. man no doubt. to do business with yep. and to chat with. And he's going to be handing over the uh, uh, reins. Uh, the, is it the reins or the, what are they? No, the, the trophy, whatever it's the called. The reins. Yeah. To, uh, to Joe Drellick. Yeah. And Joe's going to be taking over the national after this last one of 2024. And it's going from great hands to great hands. So I'm, I'm really, we're really blessed that the national, uh, for the years that John ran it, uh, was the executive director, just did a phenomenal job and yeah. took it f- to where it is today. And Joe's going to pick up the torch well, and, I know and continue you, it on. I've known these guys for a long time. I'm just gotten to know him the last four or five years but you know you would say john brought the uh, huge shoes to fill with john absolutely but i mean joe is the man to fill and joe you know has I mean? joe's unbelievable i saw him at when we went to the philly show last year what he i mean he the, the, he doesn't just sit in his office once it starts he's doing crowd control he's he's on the floor managing it great guy and we've talked we've talked uh, i've talked to joe in the past and he he just has the utmost respect for for John, uh, oh John yeah, Tommy, so, no doubt, you know, no doubt, man. All right, so I guess uh, I guess that's a wrap, JM. Yeah, uh, thanks to Brian Drant, man. Good information, oh, great stuff. Brian. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. those guys. Uh, yeah, I know. You know I wish between, I could be there, but yeah, give him, him my best. Him Tell and everyone Grady, said hello. him and Grady, and wish and, I could be there for the sandwich too. Maybe bring one every now and then to the show. For <laughs> listen, by the way, before right? we end, John, I mean, Joe Tomasulo. <laughs> Tomasulo has he has my my. Uh, my passes to get in for okay. Ellen and I, right? <laughs> so I said to him, I emailed him. He says, Joe, don't forget the passes. I'll call you when I get there. He says, no sandwiches, no passes. Wow. I'm working on my Tomasulo impression. I'll maybe <laughs> debut that in a couple weeks. All right, JM. Take care, brother. <laughs> right, nice good. seeing you. See to you. our viewers and listeners, thank you all for your support. We love you guys. And remember, happy collecting. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.